Newfoundland and Labrador's chief electoral officer is Bruce Chalk, and he joins me this Sunday morning from St. John's. Nice to see you. Good morning. So you have just decided today that people will now have until Friday, uh, Friday night, to apply for a special ballot. I know, though, already it's been really difficult for people stuck on the phone, having a hard time uh, getting online. Are you confident now that everyone who wants to will be able to exercise their right to vote? Uh, yes, and uh, we've made a few changes to uh, to help uh, ensure that people can uh, uh, can apply and uh, get a special ballot kit sent out to them. What are the changes you've made other than extending the deadline? Well, and in uh, extending deadline was one of the most important parts of it. The uh, online portal uh, is actually uh, the easiest way to ask for a special ballot. Uh, the other issue is with respect to people who don't have access to the internet. And we put an additional call center in place in order to be able to, uh, you know, accommodate those people. So those people will be handled by my special ballot staff on an individual basis. So once they call in uh, and we have some of their basic information, then we'll be able to process a kit if they're on our, uh, on our uh, voters list. Okay, so, so I'm glad you brought that up because there are remote communities, parts of Labrador, for instance, where yeah. uh, internet has been down, they're, they have very yeah. poor access to all of that. Uh, are yes. you sure that all of those people now, by Friday, uh, will be able to register for a special ballot? Will you do anything to, to go out and make sure they are, rather than putting the onus on them? Yeah, and, you know, we, um, uh, you know, the the part is is to try to make sure we can accommodate them most uh, i think most of the telecommunications issues in uh, that part of labrador have already been corrected so uh, we're getting uh, uh, you know we're getting the phone calls from those areas and uh, you know we should be able to accommodate those people directly are you concerned that people are still going to question whether this is actually a fair election uh, you know, there's always going to be somebody who's going to question that for an election, but the special ballot process has uh, been tried and true in our uh, legislation over the years. And, uh, you know, it's had a couple of legal challenges over the years and, uh, you know, we've always been yeah. successful. It's certainly allowed by the Constitution. It's required by the Constitution. Yeah, so, it, it, uh, it's, it's required and it's allowed, but it is not uh, yeah. prescribed as the only way to vote. Right. That is no. not actually it is not actually said that you have to vote this way all by mail in ballots. And I wonder if you've got a legal opinion as to whether the whole election could be done this way, because it's supposed to be for extraordinary circumstances, not necessarily for a general election. Yeah, and uh, I think you uh, would probably say that it is uh, extraordinary circumstances now. So, uh, uh, you know, we're almost in a total lockdown and there's uh, there's just no practical way that we can, uh, uh, you know, conduct in-person voting sure. under these conditions. But, uh, but, did, but did you get a legal, did you get legal counsel or opinion about whether this will hold up? Yeah, well, we do have our legal resources here and, uh, you know, we're quite confident that uh, we could uh, defend these decisions in court. Uh, you, you yourself wrote a letter to party leaders saying the Election Act had, quote, limited options for you to be able to yeah. delay an election. You, you even suggested yeah. the chief medical officer should be the one yeah. to delay the election, to which she, she said, yeah. that's not my job. So what makes yeah. you so certain that what you're doing now is legal, given you didn't seem to know a number of days ago? Well, you know, I was confident I was able to delay the election on my part. I do have a section in the act which allows me to do that. Uh, but uh, I have to take make make my decision based on the uh, uh, the exigencies of the circumstances. And uh, on uh, on Friday, when I found out that uh, we were moving from level two to level five, and that. Uh, because of the variant, I knew that it was impossible for us to be able to conduct in-person voting uh, in the province. We had a uh, hard enough time finding resources uh, we, at level two. We certainly wouldn't be able to find them at level five. Right. Did you talk to, there have been three other provinces that have successfully held elections during this pandemic. Yes. Did, you, did you consult with them or did you consult with Elections Canada? Yeah, and um, as a group, uh, all of the elect uh, chief electoral officers across the country, uh, you know, are in constant communication with each other. Uh, we knew what uh, British Columbia was doing, what but uh, what they had in their legislation. They had some form of a telephone. Uh, 
you know, a mechanism, but that's in their legislation. So each piece of legislation across the country is different. And because it is something that works in BC doesn't necessarily work in, uh, in our area. Sure. But I think uh, the other part to be aware of in this particular situation, they did have uh, successful elections, but uh, uh, if you, uh, they didn't have the, uh, uh, the variant uh, wasn't prevalent. No, no in they didn't. They didn't have the variant, Mr. Chalk, but they had yeah. significantly more cases yeah. than than you have. Yeah. And and yes. so I guess that would lead me to wonder whether you were even prepared, whether you had a oh, contingency we? plan for this kind of situation, given that you seem to be changing your mind on how the election should be held every day. Yeah. Well, you know, other than the the delay, we were ready to go on the uh, on. Uh, uh, on Saturday for the uh, 22 districts outside of uh, St. John's. Uh, it was only when it became impractical on Saturday, on Friday night that we had to make a decision not to go forward. Uh, you know, we had anticipated uh, that we would lose a number of people working for us at the polls. Uh, and uh, as such, we increased the numbers of people that uh, were on our list for calls right. in case we had people pulling out. Uh, and they were, they were very long lists, uh, but uh, it became impractical to get people that uh, just suddenly refused to work. Sure. Though, though if, if you had really been prepared for potential outbreak, would you not have focused more on mail-in ballots sooner? Well, and we did. Uh, we, uh, we, all of our advertising uh, right from the beginning was that, uh, uh, you know, we pushed uh, the fact that you could vote by special ballot uh, right from the beginning. And as such, we had a uh, considerable increase in the numbers from the 2019 general election to ours. Mm -hmm. And we had prepared actually for uh, double of what we actually had come in uh, during that uh, that part, okay. so we had anticipated, uh, you know, and but they hadn't, you know, people hadn't applied at that point. Uh, the ballots now have to be returned on or before March first. That has not changed, I don't think. How quickly do you um, think March fifth, yes. actually? March fifth. Uh, Sorry, yeah, we did. We charged it March fifth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, how quickly after that do you think you will have results? Yeah, and uh, one of the things that we have in there is that. Uh, uh, once we have the special ballots in, we can start counting some of those. So once we have all of them sent out, then our legislation does allow us to start counting some of those uh, as they come in. So we already have uh, 30,000 here. And that once we've got uh, uh, the, the other ones sent out, then we can start to redeploy our resources to okay. uh, start counting those. Okay, Mr. Chalk, you've got a lot of work ahead, so I, I will appreciate I appreciate you making the time for us this morning. Good luck.